before that we have a PBR its function of the rate law and the design equations which at the same time depend on the conversion and we have the F2 which also depends this comes from Ergun equation this models pressure drop and this models the rate law and the design equation of course both depend on X and pressure so we've seen how to solve it analytically how to solve it with numerical methods and now we're going to see how to solve it with a software as this is just an overview I'm not going to actually use the software uh, I have that in or I will be doing a course on how to use computer methods and solving uh, chemical engineering problems in software and computer so I'm just going to explain you what you should do in this case so let me check yeah uh, usually or at least the most common one or easiest one because it's easy to get is the polymath actually I think there you you get that in your CD in this cut uh, of Fogler's book but we're going to do essentially or what this is is essentially a solver of ordinary differential equations you can read it here so you just need to do it and add conditions and then next and it gives you even tables and graphs that's way cool because you don't need to calculate each point by yourself then the software do it by itself now essentially suppose you already got everything you got all your your design equation your rate law you have the pressure drop and you have everything all you know ideal gases all the mass you know density times volume volumetric flow rates f of a zero equals concentration etc you have all your equations ready to solve but of course you don't want to solve it by hand so what you're going to do is first of all set all the constants with values so if you're going to use I don't know the ideal gas and you know you are going to use R well just define R as a constant and give it a value 8.314 and I like always to like here add in what type of units you have Celsius degrees, Celsius degrees, kilojoules kilojoules, kilograms, kilograms per minute of course you need to be sure that these equations will cancel the for example if I use minutes and I use seconds well of course the, pro the program will multiply that but will not cancel the minutes and seconds so just be sure you have the dimensions correctly set and also if you're going to if you're lazy enough that you don't want to be writing mass flow in all the equations well just set a value so essentially set all the constants uh, to values or all the variables that are constant set them essentially it's just variable equals a number then we continue we're going to set all the variables to equations so first one was variables to constants or numbers and now we're going to change it to changing numbers because for example the pressure is going to change and what happens when the pressure changes we have a change in the volume or temperature of ideal gas well in this case since it is uh, isothermal you will have no change in no change in temperature but you will have a change in volume Wait, let me just erase it yeah now you know the volumetric flow rate depends on the ideal gas well not actually not this one. the initial one is constant but the volumetric flow rate at any let's say any point of the pack bed here will be modeled with the ideal gas and of course you will tell me why wouldn't we just calculate it first we cannot do that because as the function changes for example we are modeling this function when it changes here you will have a different pressure and you will have to calculate that again and you know that our concentrations depend on our volumetric flow rate so we will need to set that as a variable here it is and then also the mass flow you know but well maybe the mass flow is constant and the area is constant so this is actually just to be let's say we are lazy enough that we don't want to write it here and we want the problem uh, the program to solve this mass flux we just say mass flow which is we already have it set which is 4.5 divided by area maybe you want even also include that area equals diameter uh, divided by 4 to the square power and you also will need to give the diameter here which will be I don't know 5 centimeters be sure to change that 2 meters or 
all the equations modify them so you have dimension analysis correct now once you've set all the, uh, the variables or equations we need to set our first order differential equation what's that it's essentially f1 the one we get from our design equation and the rate uh, law so here it is rate law the design equation of the PBR and of course with stoichiometric values uh, set the initial point uh, normally we're going to be setting this point to x as x equals zero the initial mass will be of course w zero which normally is of course zero why zero because you're starting you're designing this for an inlet but maybe you want to know what will happen if you're in the half well choose a different mass of catalyst then we set the second order differential equation which is F2 the ergon equation or the derived equation of ergon that we got for our reactor and we need to once again set values this will be P actually you also need to set P here P equals P0 you need to set P0 W as also the beginning we are modeling at the beginning so that's why this will be 0 and the conversion it's also 0 now hopefully you get all the data right and you have all the analysis the thing here with problem uh, with this type of uh, programs is that you need to be sure that all the equations are set correctly not only I mean by theory but I mean that the numbers as I told you before maybe you wrote 5 centimeters and you should have wrote 0 0.005 or 0.05 depending on the units you're using so just be sure and just click this round button which is here and hopefully everything goes fine and you will get your solution uh, yeah essentially that's everything guys this is very cool because you will get tables with all let's say x pressure drop mass needed and many other data maybe you could also include the vol uh, volumetric flow rate of the gas and you will find out as conversion passes you know conversion always goes increases from 0 to 1 Massive catalyst always increases from zero to from zero to a number, and the pressure drop actually stays between one and might even achieve zero. Not common, but may be. Volumetric flow rate will be actually changing. And uh, yeah, essentially you have everything. And depending on the question they ask you, maybe they tell you how much mass would you need for a conversion of 50 percent. Well, you run it and you just go to this table, find 50% of conversion and write the number here. Or maybe they ask what is the pressure drop for a mass of, I don't know, maybe 50 grams of catalyst. Just get this here, find 50 grams and then you will find the final pressure. Just be sure that the pressure drop is final or initial pressure minus final pressure all this here will be negative number depend, of course and yeah, essentially that's how we, you solve a PBR I'm not going to solve it right now if you really want to check it out I'm going to have one Excel program and maybe even a polymath now I'm sure I'm going to use polymath at, at least once so check it out in the courses reactor engineering and yeah we have also these exercises of the book, if you want to check them out, 5, 6, they talk about, let's say the first one is pressure drop, essentially just pressure drop in a pack bed, that's easy one, you just check pressure drop. Then you have a pressure drop versus conversion, that's a little bit more complex. And then we have the conversion with pressure drop, probably the same as the previous one but a little bit more complex because you have, I don't know many here conversions percentages you have even prices look this this is very very curious one the rate of reaction depends on pressure why pressure because normally pressure you know that in gases means that you can get the concentration and essentially guys is everything for this PBR you want to check out more exercises which I will totally recommend because I just had here theory Check them out here, chemicalengineeringguide.com slash courses. Then check out the reactor engineering course. 
go to the solve problems sections and I will be having it in chapter number four how to solve these problems with plain English videos so yeah once again the same stuff we got even 33 problems on the back of the book I'm going to solve them here and once again will be in this section the solve problem section and we're done with PBR pack bed reactors we're going to our final section which is semi-continuous reactor in isothermal design see you there What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.